Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Hebrew. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi, everyone. I'm Edith. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. Pronunciation refers to the manner in which a word is spoken. So don't focus on reading what's on screen. Instead, focus on listening and repeating. In Hebrew, there are only 22 letters of the alphabet, and technically they're all consonants. There are also vowel sounds which are shown by the dot system called nikud. Many of the sounds are similar to English, like b, v, sh, s, and t. B, v, sh, s. But there are a few sounds you may not recognize at first. Like ch, uh, tz. In Hebrew, words are stressed differently than in English. Stress is usually on the last syllable of the word. Avoda, mutzetz, mitlabesh. But in some cases, the stress is on the second to last syllable of the word. Lakoach, nosea, mitlabeshet. Letters produce consonant sounds. These sounds are combined with vowel sounds indicated by the nikud. Vowel sounds you find in Hebrew are all found in English as well. A, E, I, O, U. There are different notations for these vowels, but in most cases, the basic vowel sound stays the same. The pattern of the word and the placement of the vowel determines which vowel symbol will be used. For example, the word for language, lashon, and the word for crisis, mshber, both have a vowels after the first letter. But because of the way the word is constructed, the vowels are notated differently. Some letters have two sounds, depending on if there's a stress on the consonant or not. Bet is both b and v. Kaf is both k and ch. Pe is both p and f. There is also one other letter that changes sound according to the dot above it. That's shin and sin. It makes the sh sound when the dot is on the right, and the s sound when the dot is on the left. The most daunting group of letters are the guttural letters. A, h, ch, a, r. Three of these letters are pronounced deep in the throat. These may feel unusual at first, but are fun to say once you get the hang of them. Ein, chet, reish. Most of the sounds in Hebrew are already sounds you use in English. That means that if you were to simply imitate a Hebrew speaker, your pronunciation would be correct a lot of the time. For example, listen and repeat after Edith. Rakevet. Rakevet. Chances are your pronunciation was pretty spot on. The K, V, and T sounds are practically identical to English. It's only the R that's a little different. Focus on this first letter. It's often written as an R, but don't be fooled. This letter is pronounced differently than an English R. It's pronounced at the back of the throat, instead of forward in the mouth. Listen to Edith say this letter. R. R. It's actually closer to the German or French R, but without the roll. Nearly all sounds in Hebrew are identical to English, like the K, V, and T sounds in this example. Since you already know how to pronounce most of these sounds, we only need to pay attention to the handful of sounds that are completely new to you. They're the ones we need to look out for. In the previous lesson, we taught you how to say thank you in Hebrew. Do you remember what it was? It's... Toda. Well done. Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Hebrew has 22 letters, but even more sounds. The extra sounds come from the vowels and the consonants that can represent two sounds instead of one. Many of the sounds in Hebrew are identical to the sounds in English. And there are only a handful of new sounds that you need to learn. We've covered only the basics of Hebrew pronunciation. If you're interested in learning more, check out our ultimate guide to Hebrew pronunciation. 
In that video series, we teach you how to pronounce every single sound used in Hebrew. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Hi everyone, my name is Yara, and today we're gonna do uh, top Hebrew phrases. These are very useful phrases you're gonna hear a lot when you come to Israel, so uh, make sure to memorize them. Okay, let's start. Shalom. Hello. Shalom literally means peace, but we use it also as a greeting. Shalom. Manishma. How are you? Uh, that's a very casual way of asking how are you, and it literally means what is heard. Like, yeah, like what have you been up to? What's going on with you? Manishma. Toda. Thanks. And probably the only way to say it, we don't have like thanks or thank you, it's just toda. Bevakasha. Please. Bevakasha, it means please, but it can also mean there you go. So you can say, Efshar lekabel maim, bevakasha. Can I have water, please? And when you give someone water, you can also say, bevakasha. There you go. Slicha. Excuse me. Uh, it means excuse me or sorry. So when you like push through people in the bus, you can go, mm, slicha, slicha, slicha. Uh, but when you step on someone on the bus, you can also say, oi, slicha, I'm sorry. Lehitraot, see you. It literally means to see each other again. So it's like, to see each other again. <laughs> Lehitraot. Uh, it's also very casual. Beseder. Okay. This is a very, very useful word. You can say it when someone asks you, how are you? Beseder. You can say it to show you understand something. When someone gives you direction, you're like, beseder. Uh, it literally means in order, like everything's in order. Tov, fine. Uh, most of the time it means fine. Literally, it means good, a lot like beseder. How are you? Tov, to respond to a direction, like uh, go that way, please. Tov, fine, I understand. Allo davar, you're welcome. We use it as, you're welcome, and it literally means, oh, for nothing. Thank you. Oh, a lot of all. It was nothing. It's maybe a bit more formal than bevakasha. Most of the times when people say toda, you answer bevakasha. You can also answer a lot of all. It's pretty much the same, though bevakasha is a bit more common. Boker tov. Good morning. Boker tov, uh, which literally means good morning, and you obviously use it in the morning. Boker tov. Laila tov. Good night. So yeah, good night you can say uh, when you 
leave a party at night, you know, you can say, okay, bye, good night, לילה טוב. צהריים טובים, good afternoon. צהריים טובים, good afternoon. You can definitely say that, but you don't hear it that often. It literally means good noon. מה שמך? What's your name? For a male, it would be מה שמך? For a female, מה שמך? What is your name? You can also ask איך קוראים לך? Which literally means how are you called? And this is the most common way to ask. נעים להכיר. Nice to meet you. Literally, I guess it would mean pleasant. It is pleasant to meet you. And you can say נעים להכיר אותך for a woman or נעים להכיר אותך for a man. A for where? איפה התחנה? Where is the station? איפה is very important. You should memorize this one. אני מבין. I see. For a woman, it would be אני מבינה. I understand, I see. אני מבינה. מה השעה? What time is it? The literal translation would be, what is the hour? This is how you ask. סליחה, מה השעה? Excuse me, what time is it? אפשר בבקשה לקבל? Can I please have? אפשר בבקשה לקבל מים? Can I please have some water? And this would be the same uh, for a male speaker and for a female speaker. אפשר בבקשה לקבל? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? שירותים? Is restroom? איפה השירותים? Another one to memorize. אני מצטער. I'm sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת להפריע. I'm sorry to interrupt. כן. Yes. You can use it in any way you use yes. Yeah, use it. Be positive. Lo. No. I like this word. It has a fun sound. And it was my sister's first word. Lo. No. Bali. I feel like. Bali. It's two words. Bali. And it means I feel like I want. And you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida. I feel like ice cream. I want ice cream. לא בא לי ללכת לבית הספר. I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. די. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop. When someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, די. Stop it. Enough. Yeah. כמה זה עולה? How much is it? כמה זה? עולה. How much is it? How much does it cost? מעולה. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome, uh, it's מעולה. The masculine form is מעולה and the feminine is מעולה. Like, ההופעה uh, הזאת מעולה. This show is awesome. It's great. איך היה הטיול? היה מעולה. How was the trip? It was מעולה. Great. Awesome. Okay, that's it for today for Top Hebrew Phrases. Thank you so much for watching. And what is your favorite Hebrew phrase? Tell us on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. You! Hey, you! You! Yeah, you! Welcome to Hebrew Top Words. So, my name is Yara, and I do not know uh, today's words, but the theme is 10 hardest words to pronounce in Hebrew. So, let's begin. Chatzotzra, trumpet. Chatzotzra, trumpet. Haiti rotzalen again bechatzotzra. I would like to play the trumpet. Letzachzeach, to brush. חשוב מאוד לצחצח שיניים פעמיים ביום. It is very important to brush your teeth twice a day. צריכים. must, need. צריכים. must. צריכים is, is the word must, but in the plural masculine version of this word. הם צריכים. They must, they need. For example, 
הם צריכים לעזוב את המסיבה המוקדם. They must leave the party early. They must or they need to. או they have to. חתיכה. Peace. חתיכה. Peace. I, it's not like it, there, these are not tongue twisters, it's just, it's for people who can't pronounce ח. אפשר לקבל חתיכת עוגה בבקשה? Can I have a piece of cake, please? מנצנץ. Sparkling. I love this word. מנצנץ. Sparkling. Yeah, I, okay, I love this lesson. These are really fun words. It's fun to say. Try it. Come on. Nice. For example, השרשרת שלי מנצנצת. My necklace is sparkly. It's not really, but just, you know, use your imagination. פעלולים. Special effects. פעלולים. But it's more fun saying it fast. פעלולים. So usually like a stuntman will be called פעלולן. Now that I, 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 I'm saying it over and over again, I'm like, is this a real word? I'm not sure all of a sudden, but it is. Wow. מי היה אחראי על הפעלולים בסרט הזה? וואו, who was in charge of the special effects in this movie? שפשוף, rub. This is a noun, the verb will be לשפשף. אם נשפך לכם יין אדום על השטיח, תשפשפו אותו במלח. If you spilled red wine on your carpet, rub it with salt. Someone told me about this method, I did not uh, check it, so I don't really know. לצחקק, to giggle. לצחקק, to giggle. Oh, that's a wonderful word. To laugh is לצחוק. So this is like the smaller version of it, לצחקק. And the noun version is צחקוק. צחקוקים, yeah, in plural. הם לא הפסיקו לצחקק בזמן שדיברתי. They wouldn't stop giggling while I was talking. How rude. מחצלת. מעט. מחצלת. מעט. כשאתם הולכים לים, אל תשכחו לקחת מחצלת. When you go to the beach, don't forget to take a mat. שרוכים. שולייסס. שרוכים. שולייסס. באיזה גיל למדתם לקשור את השרוכים? What age did you learn to tie your own shoelaces? So that's it. Thank you so much for watching the 10 hardest word uh, to pronounce in Hebrew. I hope we will learn something new. Tell us in the comments what was your favorite word and don't forget to check the website. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye. Hi everyone, welcome to Hebrew Top Words. My name is Yara and today we're going to learn 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Okay, are you ready? Let's start. אני אדבר עברית ברמת שפת אם תוך שלוש שנים. I'll speak Hebrew in a native level in three years. אני אדבר עברית ברמת שפת אם תוך שלוש שנים. I'll speak Hebrew in a native level in three years. You think you can? Well, prove it. Start now. אני יכולה לצפות בסרטים בעברית ללא כתוביות. I can watch movies in Hebrew without subtitles. אני יכולה לצפות בסרטים בעברית ללא כתוביות. I can watch movies in Hebrew without subtitles. There actually are a lot of good movies done in Israel in the last, like, 10 years. Obviously more, but if you want to, you know, be updated. A uh, few of my favorite are Jellyfish, which is amazingly good, I think. And another one who was actually nominated for the Academy Awards uh, called Vals im Bashir, Waltz with Bashir, I think. It's a really good movie. אני יכולה לשנן בערך 50 מילים חדשות בעברית ביום. I can memorize around 50 new Hebrew words a day. אני יכולה לשנן בערך 50 מילים חדשות בעברית ביום. I can memorize around 50 new Hebrew words a day. That's crazy, can you? You say that to me and I will be amazed. Just saying. אני לומדת עברית כבר עשר שנים. I've been learning Hebrew for 10 years. אני לומדת עברית כבר עשר שנים. I've been learning Hebrew for 10 years. Well, that would only amaze me if you don't speak Hebrew at this point, because learning a language for 10 years and not being able to speak it, well, that is amazing. אני לומדת עברית לגמרי לבד. 
I'm learning Hebrew all by myself. אני לומדת עברית לגמרי לבד. I'm learning Hebrew all by myself. That is impressive. How do you do that? With HebrewPod101.com? Well, in Israel, when we're impressed, we have this sound that we make. <laughs> It goes... Okay, so this is what you say when you're impressed. All by yourself? I am amazed. You know what? Amazed. הבנתי את כל מה שאמרת. I understood everything you said. <laughs> That's a funny one. הבנתי את כל מה שאמרת. I understood everything you said. I hope you understand everything I say. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here talking to myself. But you know what? Props to you. חוץ מעברית, אני יכולה לדבר גם כמה שפות אחרות. Apart from Hebrew, I can speak a few other languages as well. Well, that's just bragging. חוץ מעברית, אני יכולה לדבר גם כמה שפות אחרות. Apart from Hebrew, I can speak a few other languages as well. Well, you don't need to brag, okay? I only have two. How many languages can you speak? Leave a comment below. Make us jealous. לקח לי רק שנה אחת על מנת לדבר בשטף. It took me only one year to become fluent. לקח לי רק שנה אחת על מנת לדבר בשטף. It took me only one year to become fluent. Well, I am amazed by that because, as you probably already know, Hebrew is a difficult language to learn, but I think it's doable. עברית היא כיפית וקלה ללמידה. Hebrew is fun and easy to learn. עברית היא כיפית וקלה ללמידה. Hebrew is fun and easy to learn. I would be happy if you think that. Yeah, do you agree? Is Hebrew fun and easy to learn? Hope it is. תודה, אבל זו לא שפת האם שלי, למען האמת. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. תודה, אבל זו לא שפת האם שלי, למען האמת. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. You're not a native speaker? Then, פשש, you're really good. What that would really amaze me will be... למדתי את כל זה אתמול. I learned all of that yesterday. פשש, must have been a busy day. Okay, thank you so much for watching 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Now go out there and amaze some native speakers. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Shalom, I'm Yana. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit B'Shalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying Toda. In this lesson, we learned some of the most common greetings used in Israel. Atem Uchanim, are you ready? As bon atchil, so let's start. The most used greeting is Shalom. Sha-lom. We also saw it in the first lesson. Shalom simply means hi or hello. It can also mean goodbye. We use it when we meet, but also can use it when we part. Shalom means something like peace, so it makes the greeting very special. It is common to say shalom in both informal and formal situations, and at any time of the day. In the morning, you can also greet people with Boker Tov. Boker Tov which means good morning. Boker is morning, and tov is good. During the evening, we also say erev tov. Erev tov. Erev is Hebrew for evening, so erev tov means good evening. Boker tov and erev tov are used when we meet someone, but when we leave, we don't say them again. Another way to say goodbye in Hebrew is lehitraot. Le Hit, ra, ot. It is actually more common to use lehitraot than shalom when leaving. But most people in Israel just say bye. Bye! Now you can greet people in many different ways in Hebrew. Let's review them all again. When meeting people in formal and informal situations, shalom. In the morning until the afternoon we say boker tov. And in the evening, erev tov. When living in any situation, lehitraot, or simply, bye. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. In formal situations, 
Israeli people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on one cheek. Don't be afraid to do it with your Israeli friends. It's normal. During the next lesson, we'll learn the meaning of the phrase Ata medaber anglit or At medaberet anglit. Do you already know it? We'll be waiting to talk about it with you in our next Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot lesson. Lehitraot. Bye. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, Use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods, and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. 
So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account, which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles, or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. 
If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher, watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal, tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you'll feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Want to finally learn Hebrew the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on hebrewpod101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. We have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. 
This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the check answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Hebrew, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to HebrewPod101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. I'll see you next time. Bye! You've decided to study a new language, so now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now.